Hi there, I'm Dave Finnegan, and I'm going to tell you about a program called Green Actioneers. Now, in order to understand Green Actioneers, you got to go back a little bit. From 1976 until 2006, I traveled to schools all over the world. I went to 12 countries and, and over 2,000 schools, 46 states, and I taught juggling. Now, what does that have to do with Green Actioneers? I'll tell you. The program was called Juggling for Success, and it was a one-day program in the schools. Here's how it's phased. The flow of the day is the secret to the program, and it's the way we're organizing Green Actioneers. You start with the teachers meeting in the morning. Get all the teachers on board. Get them to the point where they go, this makes sense. And with the juggling program, that meant every teacher learned how to juggle with slow-moving nylon scarves. And it's so easy, even teachers could do it. <laughs> then I'd take the kids a grade level at a time. With the kindergarten kids, we'd work on throw and clap and catch and throw and touch and catch and throw and fly like a bird and catch. Lots of tricks that kindergartners can do. With the first graders, I worked with two scarves. It's throw, throw, catch, catch. By the time they got up to second grade, they could do two in one hand. With my third graders, I'd always move them on to three. You throw one up the middle and two up the side. Every third grader can do this. Throw one, throw two, throw one, throw two, throw one. Fourth grade learned how to do the cascade, and fifth grade learned all of the above plus the reverse cascade. If I had any high school or middle school kids in the class, or anybody who already knew how to juggle, then we move on to bean bags. So everybody learned at their own speed. I took the kids in the cafeteria or in the gym and took them a whole grade level at a time. So if there are 800 kids in the school, that means I got about 120 to 150 kids in each class, but it's easy because I got a microphone. And so the kids, paid close attention, they learned, they had a great time. At the end of the day, we held an all-school assembly. In the all-school assembly, the first group to get up on stage was the teachers, because the teachers came to a teacher's meeting before school, and they learned how to juggle. And so, at the end of the day, after all the kids have performed, the teachers get up and perform, and the school goes nuts. Everybody loves to see the teachers get up and juggle. But that's not the end of the program. Really, that's just the start of the program. Because I would say to the assembled throng, tonight is family night. Make sure you come to family night. you got to come with a grown-up. You can't come alone. You can bring your mom or your dad or your grandma or your grandpa or your uncle or your aunt and your older brothers and sisters. Bring the whole family. Everybody who's here is going to get to perform. And then we're going to teach all your guests how to juggle. And then they get to perform. So it was a great hit. And the way it would flow is that by the time evening came around, we'd get half or more of the families back in school for family night. At the end of family night, of course people want to continue. So I allowed them, if they wished, to purchase my book. So I had The Complete Juggler, 575 pages on juggling. I had The Joy of Juggling. I even had the Zen of juggling. Not how to juggle, but why. <laughs> I also had DVDs. I had the Juggle Time DVD. This one got a Parents' Choice Award and 11 other national awards. Very proud of Juggle Time. And I had Juggling for Success. We called it Juggling Step by Step. Now, Juggle Time was for the little guys because it's musical instructions. And juggling step by step 
was for the older kids. And it's not just scarves and balls. It's rings and clubs and devil sticks and diablos and spinning plates and cigar boxes like W.C. Fields used to manipulate. So we've got all those things that people could get in the evening, and they loved it. And they'd take it home, and they'd have a wonderful time. And I'd hear from the same schools or from neighbor schools year after year, please come back or please come to our school. So when it came time to design a program about going green, I decided to use that as the model. So where it started with juggling for success, the next iteration was climate change is elementary. And I delivered this program with the same flow of the day in schools in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Maryland, and Colorado. But I live in Florida. So I came back to Florida and I suggested that we would do this program in Florida. <laughs> It isn't going to fly in Florida. And the reason is because there are actually people who don't think that the climate is changing, or if it is changing, people aren't responsible, or there's nothing we can do about it. So I decided to change the name of the program. And not to talk about the problem of climate change at all. The program is all about going green, and we are now green actioneers. And so the kids get to become the first green actioneers. Here's how the day flows. It's going to sound very familiar. We start with a teacher's meeting in the morning. And in the teacher's meeting, I make sure the teachers understand that this program is not going to get anybody in trouble. We're not talking about climate change or global warming or sea level rise, although they can look those things up on their own. What we're talking about is saving money for families and saving the planet for kids. We're talking about going green. So that's the teacher's meeting. Then when I take the kids a grade level at a time, instead of teaching everybody to juggle, what I teach them about is a critter. One animal. And it's environment. So we're talking about ecology. Uh, we're talking about the balance between animals and the planet and people and the planet. So what animals do we stress? Well, with kindergartners, of course, it's butterflies. We, we have monarch butterflies as our course of study. Now, that doesn't mean that we sit and listen to a lecture about monarch butterflies. No, no, no. When the kids come into class, they come in as monarch butterflies, and the song is playing in the background. So immediately, everybody knows that they're going to be butterflies for the whole period. Uh, we look at slides about the life cycle of the butterfly. We learn that it goes from an egg to uh, a little worm-like creature, to a, a chrysalis that's all balled up, and to a, a full-blown butterfly. And that all these butterflies uh, start out either in Mexico or in the Caribbean or South Florida. And then in the springtime, they go north. And the next generation is born. And then they go north again. And the next generation is born. And they go north again. And that generation we call the Methuselah generation, it's going to fly all the way back to where it was born. It's probably going to go to the same tree that its great, great, great grandparents came from. It's so amazing. The kids love it. So they see the slides and they get to play a game. We play that same butterfly song and the kids get to go through the stages of being a butterfly four times. They get the ball up in a ball. They get to stretch out like a, like a, a, a little caterpillar. They get to uh, put their feet up in the air and become a chrysalis and hang by their feet. And then they get to become a butterfly. And they do that four times. And then they take a long flight and go back to Mexico. And they love the song and they love the game. And at the end of the game, they all sit down and we find out that butterflies have a problem. And that the problem is people. And that the problem with people is that we're spraying a lot of things that hurt the butterflies. 
And so there are less butterflies than there used to be. And so we shouldn't spray as many things that hurt the butterflies. That's all they learn, but that's enough because they love the butterflies. So I thank them very much. We put the music back on and they fly out of the classroom. The next group flies in, but they don't fly, they hop because they're first graders and they're frogs. So the first graders hop in and you know the song, it's called Five Little Frogs. You've heard it your whole life. <laughs> so they hop into Five Little Frogs and then they line up like little frogs. And then we uh, have lily pads set out in the back of the classroom. They're just cut out of paper or they could be plastic if you have those plastic discs. And they're in the back of the class you know, of the gym or, or cafeteria. And they're all sitting down in front. And then we talk about frogs and we see slides on frogs and we understand that frogs have a problem. And the problem is that there's less water sources than there used to be and they're getting smaller. So then I say, okay, all you frogs go to the back of the room and find a pond or a puddle to be in and, and there's exactly enough. So if there's 200 kids, there's 200 puddles. And so now they're spread out in the back. I put on the Five Little Frog song and it's like musical chairs, but it's musical puddles. I say, now, when the song starts, I want you to start hopping and you hop from puddle to puddle. And whenever the song stops, then you have to be in a puddle. Well, needless to say, there's exactly enough puddles for frogs. And the first time, everybody's in a puddle. But then the teachers and I sneakily go around and while the music is playing and they're hopping, we're picking up puddles. So now there's probably half as many puddles as there were before. And so when I stop the music, they're looking for a puddle. And I say, oh, you can put two frogs in a puddle. So they do. <laughs> and then I do it again. Now it's three frogs in a puddle. Then it's four frogs in a puddle. Then it's so many frogs and so few puddles that the frogs are having a terrible time finding a place to land. So we sit down and talk about it. And we talk about how people are decreasing A, the number of water sources, and B, the quality of the water sources, so that people are the problem. <laughs> You're getting the idea. <laughs> so then the frogs hop out, and the next group comes in, and, and that next group might be uh, sea turtles or manatees, either one. And I have them swim in and swim around the classroom or the gym, and then they sit down, and then we talk about the problem. <laughs> and we have a song, a sea turtle song or a manatee song. And then we have a game and the game has to do with swimming and, and uh, probably with the manatees, uh, I would put two kids in boats <laughs> and, and let the boats run around and the manatees are all down on the ground and the boats tag the manatee. And when the boat tags the manatee, it means that the propeller of the boat has hit the manatee and that hurts the manatee. So now that manatee doesn't go sit on the side. This isn't an elimination game. We don't have any elimination games. That manatee becomes a boat. <laughs> so then his or her job is to go around and touch other manatees and turn them, uh, touch, touch other manatees and turn them into boats. So now we've got lots of boats and very few manatees. It only takes about a minute or two for all of the manatees to get hit by boats and for all of the kids to be boats and nobody's a manatee anymore. So we go sit down and we talk about the problem. And the problem again is people. And this time it's people not paying attention to manatees. So we have manatees, we have sea turtles, we have coral, uh, we have um, Florida panthers, uh, Florida black bears. And then when I'm up in the Northeast, we have puffins. I love puffins. And the song about puffins, you've all heard the song about puffins, the size of a muffin that lives on an island in the deep blue sea. And he loves little fishes that are quite delicious. <laughs> well, the problem with puffins is that puffins only eat one thing. They eat sand eels. And sand eels are way down deep in the ocean. So the puffins fly and dive, and we see some great video of puffins swimming. They swim like fish, they're just beautiful. And then they go find the sand eels and they come back up and their beaks are full of sand eels when they come back up. And then they go feed their young. And so we show them feeding their young. 
And then we show the fact that the sand eels are migrating. The sand eels are going north because the water is warmer where they are now and colder up where they're going. So they want to be in a place where the water is cold. So they are going north. And the manatees have to go north too. So the manatees go north to follow the sand eels. And so again, we have a people problem. So how are we going to solve the people problem? So now it's time for the next phase of the program. The next phase of the program is uh, the assembly at the end of the day. So in the assembly at the end of the day, the kids all sit down just like they did in the juggling assembly. But now instead of getting up and showing off their juggling, they get to respond to a question. And the question is, do butterflies have a problem? And the whole kindergarten goes, yes! I say, what is the problem? The whole kindergarten go, people! So people are the problem. First grade, what did you study? We studied frogs. Do frogs have a problem? Yes! What's the problem? People are the problem. Second grade, did you study something? Yes. What'd you study? Manatees. Do manatees have a problem? Yes. What's the problem? People are the problem. Well, we go all the way through the grades, K through five, six, seven, or eight, and we find out that people are always the problem. So I say, and people are going to be the solution because we have it in our power to change all those things. We have it in our power to not pollute those frog habitats, to not run our boats fast where the manatees are uh, happily thronging, to not uh, spray psh, 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 uh, all sorts of pesticides where the uh, butterflies are going to be flying. Uh, and, and so the kids get the idea that the best thing for us to do is to go green. And then I say, tonight is family night. You can't come alone. You got to bring a grown up. Make sure you get here by seven o'clock because at seven o'clock, we're going to start our program. So make sure you're here at seven. Now, this is a very important point for those of you who are planning a program like this, either you deliver it or I deliver it. Don't offer a meal before the program. This is not come to pizza night and then we're going to do climate change or green action. Instead, it's come to green action. Uh, and the reason I've discovered is because as soon as they eat, everybody thinks about getting out of there. And we want people to come only for one reason, and that's for green actioneers. So this is not green actioneers as part of family night. This is a green actioneers family night. And whether you run it or I run it, you'll find that if you make it a green actioneers family night, people will pay attention and they'll do right by you. So now you get the parents in the evening. And again, if you do it right, you're going to get about half, maybe even more. I'll tell you how to get more. This is really fun. Combine the two programs. I say to the kids, kids, if you get here in time, which means by seven o'clock, everybody's going to get to learn to juggle. But at 7.15, we're going to put the juggling scarfs away and we're going to sit down and we're going to work on green action. Now, what do they do with green action? Well, what I used to do was I used to give them a checklist. And the checklist was 100 things that you can do in order to go green. A long list. And they would take the list home with them. And everybody would put the list on the refrigerator door. And then they wouldn't do anything. <laughs> so that's one of the changes between our previous program and the Green Actioneers program. Now, with the Green Actioneers program, they're going to be able to get the Green Actioneers workbook. Here's how it works. As soon as they walk in, the moment they walk in, they get handed a Green Actioneers workbook. So the Green Actioneers workbook is one per family. And they go sit down with their Green Actioneers workbook and they start working their way through the workbook. And I tell them, 
Now, I want you to find something in here that you know you could do. And there's a hundred things in here that they could do. And, and uh, there's a coloring page. Uh, there's a word game. It's in English and it's in Spanish. So there's always something they can do. So they take this book and sit down and start working through it as a family. Then, at a certain point, I say, okay, I'd like to find out what you're going to do. And the first family raises their hand and they say something like, uh, we're going to take shorter showers. And I say, okay, everybody who can take shorter showers, look at your grown-up. And if they give you the high sign, I want you to jump up and say, we can do that too. So, we can do that too. Everybody jumps up. Like, Good. Okay, what's another thing that you can do? And so they start giving me things that are easy that they can do. And by the time they've given me eight or nine, <laughs> then I say, okay, I'm going to give you one. Put solar panels on the roof. Well, the kids look at their parents, and whether they get a high sign or not, they're going to jump up and say, we can do that. <laughs> and then I say, make your next car an electric car. And again, the kids jump up and say, we can do that. So now I've got a whole bunch of people who are committed to the Green Actioneers workbook. And I say, kids, take the book home. It's your book. Color the pages. And when you find something you really like, tell your grown-up about it. And see if you can't make that one of the things that you do in order to go green. So it's a brand new program. It's a brand new book. And we'd love to have you either deliver that yourself or invite me in to do it, or let me train somebody in your school district to deliver the program. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm Dave Finnegan. The program is Green Actioneers, <laughs> and uh, you might just learn to juggle. Thanks a lot. See you out on the road. Bye.